Let's now move on and talk about another big story of the day. After being in jail for over three years, lawyer and activist Sudha Bharadwaj has finally walked out of Mumbai jail on a bail today. This after Supreme Court refused to intervene in the matter, even when NIA approached the top court against the Bombay High Court order on her default bail. After Supreme Court's refusal, a special NIA court decided her bail conditions, which says that she will have to stay in Mumbai during the bail period and will have to secure permission if she needs to leave the city. She has also barred, uh, been barred, in fact, from making any public statements. Sudha Bharadwaj is the first one to get default bail among the activists who were arrested for allegedly delivering inflammatory speeches at the Elgar Parishad conclave in December 2017. Cops claimed that the speeches triggered violence near Bhima Koregaon the next day. And that's our big story at this point in time. Someone was arrested. The trial did not begin for about three years. Bail was constantly being denied. So is this justified? Is UAPA being misused? That's our big debate on Urban Debate this evening. Joining us on the broadcast right now are my guests. We have Sanjay Hegre, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court, live with us. Niranjan L. Shetty, who is spokesperson, Maharashtra BJP. Dr. Ranjana Kumari, Director, Center for Social Research. Swapnil Kothari, Senior Lawyer. And Susan Gonzalez, who is a lawyer, also now joining us on the broadcast this evening. Good evening to all of you. Uh, Sanjay Hegre, let me begin this discussion with you. For three years, the trial could not begin. And Sudha Bhardwaj and many others had to be in jail. But today, finally, she managed to come out and that too because of a default mode or you can say for technical reason she was given bail and she could come out your first reaction well how can one react to something which is so obviously unjust um, i mean essentially with the uapa what you have is a system where as long as the policeman decides that he is going to invoke UAPA against you, you get put into, into custody indefinitely. There is no possibility of a trial happening Im immediately. And uh, you get bailed out on a technicality. And, on, and due to a technicality, the others who are arrested with you do not get bail. So uh, I think there is something which is fundamentally wrong in this system. I, I really think that the country needs to review the way the UAPA operates. Uh, you've had harsh laws before. We have had TADA, we have POTA. Both of them got discontinued by parliament because of disuse. UAPA preceded both of them. Uh, it was in the 1960s. That got refurbished after both TADA and POTA were done away with. And uh, now this is the new oh, act of oppression. I am very glad that Sudha Bharadwaj has walked out, but I'm mindful that there are many more like her who are still incarcerated. And one more thing, Sudha Bharadwaj and many of the people who are incarcerated in this case were nowhere near Bhima Korega were nowhere near whatever happened there. And yet, uh, at that place, there was, uh, there was an altercation between two groups. There hasn't been any great violence. Despite that, there has been continuing state incarceration. Something is wrong, something needs to be fixed. Well, that's a very important point that you're making, uh, Mr. Hegre. State incarceration is what you're calling it. Of course, uh, I don't want to go into the merits of the case because, uh, of course, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, the courts are there to decide on that. But on the issue of bail specifically, I want to go across to Swapnil Kothari now. Isn't it the right of everyone that if somebody is arrested and the trial is not beginning, that person at least has got the right to get a bail? But here, in this case... If she is guilty, why do you, uh, why are you not proving it? Why have you not started the trial? That's my basic question. Like everybody else, she also has a right to come out of jail. She also has got a right to get bail. But why was that being opposed? 
Um, Hina, you know, what happens here is that uh, the UAPA, the PMLA and the NDPS are a, some sort of a departure from the criminal jurisprudence where, uh, you know, bail is the norm and jail is the exception. The departure is that bail becomes the exception and jail becomes the norm. Obviously, there is a great, great amount of misuse as far as all these three acts are concerned. And the police seem to have a very, very long headway as far as this is concerned. Now, you rightly pointed out that does she not have a right? Obviously, and, uh, you know, for the benefit of the viewers under Section 167.2 of the CRPC, it's a right to default bail if the investigation is not completed between 60 days, within 60 days, 90 days, or 180 days. 60 days is death, life imprisonment, offense dealing with death, life imprisonment, or sentence more than 10 years. 90 days is for the rest of the cases, and 180 days is obviously things like NDPS Act. Now, if the investigation, uh, investigating agency does not complete it, then obviously there's a right to default. Obviously, here there were three years. I think Sudha was uh, incarcerated. So there's no question. I mean, it's it's long way past that uh, particular limit. And the investigation did not seem to have, uh, you know, making any headway. So obviously, there was a default bill. Bombay High Court granted it. The NIA appealed. The Supreme Court dismissed it very rightly. The issue main that arises here is that we tend to look at 167.2 as some sort of a procedural aspect. It's not. It's not a procedure to apply for a default bill and that you should get the default bill. It's more the question of personal liberty under Article 21 of the Constitution. Both the Supreme Court and the Delhi High Court have on various occasions pointed out that this right to default bail is a fundamental right. So when it's a fundamental right, obviously that trumps over every single other aspect of the investigation, every single other uh, aspect of the CRPC or any other law or any other applicable law, because everything comes below the umbrella of the fundamental rights and they reign supreme. Now, what needs to be given attention to and where the Supreme Court needs to make or take the lead, because it's taking the lead in several cases in the past couple of years that we've been seeing, be it adultery, uh, you know, decriminalization of that, decriminalization of the gay rights, uh, you know, triple talaq, abolition of triple talaq, etc. So several judgments, right to privacy itself being the fundamental right under Article 21. Now, where it needs to fix this issue is that it needs to somewhere where a person sees the investigation, say, for example, in Sudha Murthy's, uh, Sudha, uh, you know, uh, whatever, Prasad's case, is Sudha that, uh, Sudha Bharadwaj's case, uh, that, uh, you know, if you see that the investigation is not making a headway, or if it's a perverse investigation, as some of the investigations under UAP or NDPS or uh, the PMLA are, then the family members have a right to go to the Supreme Court and say that, look, here it's a question of personal liberty. She's not being uh, given a fair deal. Here there is some sort of a perverted investigation. There is malice. Now, this is where the Supreme Court needs to say that if the investigation is found to be perverse, then the Supreme Court should be allowed to call all the records and it should pass a judgment to that effect. In this case, take let's take this case or you know some case which comes up because only if it sets that as a precedent, then that is going to put sort of some sort of a clamp over the investigating agencies. What happens is that in many cases, uh, uh, Hina, what happens is that the investigating agency is generally given a, a little bit of a leverage, a leeway that you know look we can't stop an investigation just because somebody comes out and says that it's perverse. But when it goes on for a long period of time ad nauseum. Then what you need to do is you need to then uh, have a judgment in your hand right from the apex court saying that, look, you know, the Supreme Court passed such and such decision in this sort of a case where it said that the investigation is found to be perverse. It has got all the rights to call the proceedings and then take the investigating agency to task. Right. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot of repeats of these kind of scenarios. But, so but this Mr. is not Sanjay something which Hegre, is good. Everything, of course, can't be taken to the Supreme Court. I mean, you know, uh, not everybody is at that age we all know what happened with Father Stan Swami. I mean, you know, do we have to then take everything to Supreme Court? Are the investigating agencies so incompetent that this is going to be the fate of every case? I mean, if somebody uh, has been slapped with UAPA, which is an extraordinary law, then eventually the person, if that person needs justice or relief, interim relief, then only way out is to go to Supreme Court. Is that the precedent that we are setting, sir? Well, that's not the precedent that we are setting. And here, please look at it. Sudha Bhardwaj's case traveled to the Supreme Court earlier on medical grounds. The Supreme Court at that point of time denied it. They said, why don't you go and apply for regular bail? It's not as if the Supreme Court was very solicitous of individual liberty in this particular case. They, uh, 
thereafter, it was only when um, the defense team pointed out that there was a lacuna in as, as much as a competent court had not extended the time for continuing the investigation, that there was a designated NIA court, but the prosecution and the investigators had not sought its permission to continue the investigation. The permission was sought from a court which was incompetent to give that permission. And that is why on that particular premise, Sudha Bhadwaj has got default bail. As far as the others are concerned, they did not get default bail because they had not at that point of time applied for default bail. And they, later the, that defect was cured. And so in their case, they, they were not able to take advantage of this window. Be the, forget all the technicalities of law. Essentially, uh, I'd like to take one thing that uh, Swapnil Kotari said. You know, investigations sometimes run not out of personal malice on the, on the part of the investigator, but probably some kind of institutional malice. There, is, there has been uh, uh, either a senior policeman or a, a politician in charge says, these are troublemakers, get rid of them for me. And so a case is manufactured or they are fixed in any pending case. And thereafter, so the, uh, the entire process is dragged out to the maximum. When the Bombay High Court uh, released Sudha Bhardwaj, the NIA had an option of not appealing. No, but it wanted to be absolutely sure. It went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said the Bombay High Court is right. So please do not look at only the Supreme Court as the savior of your liberties. What really needs to be done is right from the trial court stage, judges have to be very zealous defenders of human and liberty. They have to be cynical when overbroad claims are being made on part of the prosecution. A few well-asked questions at the right point of time would save so much grief. And if they did that, I would do, I, I would hope that the Supreme Court and the high courts then have the vision not to unnecessarily interfere when bails are granted. You, uh, on a different note altogether, you did see the Aryan Khan uh, case where the trial court did not grant bail and then they had to go to the high court. The same trial court granted bail to a lot of the other accused. Why was it that in uh, Aryan Khan that they, he, the trial court didn't grant bail? Somewhere, Courts have to stop being more executive minded than the executive. They have to do their job as breaks on despotism. Okay. Suhas Chakma, Director, Rights and Risk Analysis Group, is also now joining us on the broadcast. And picking up from what Mr. Sanjay Hegde was talking about, do you also believe that, in a way, institutional malice seems to be impacting the investigation? I mean, the point is on every juncture, the NIA was opposing the bail application of Sudha Bharadwaj, then why in three years they have not been able to prove her guilty? Well, I think the aim of the prosecution is not to find somebody guilty. The aim of the prosecution is to make the person suffer throughout the process because the process itself is the punishment. And if you look at the cases which have been filed by the NIA, and if you look at the cases which uh, where the, the UAPA has been invoked, now, if you look at the latest data from the parliament in 2019, about 960 cases of UAPA we have filed from Haryana. Now, you tell me in Haryana which organization has been banned under the UAPA? See, the basic premise of the UAPA is to identify and notify and designate a particular group as a terror group. Then, of course, those who aspire or who are members of it, then you prosecute them after identifying them. In this particular case, as well as in many other cases, basically what government have been doing is basically invoking the UAPA to deal with peaceful assembly or sometimes protests, which may turn violent, and sometimes, you know, just mere expression of opinion and you link it with the, you know, dissatisfaction with the state. Now, if you look at the cases which have been registered under the UAPA, now you will not find any cases from Nagaland 
Then Nagaland has the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, which commands at this point of time over 10,000 troops. They are armed. That organization is not even banned under the UAPA. So what terrorist drama and which terrorist groups you are talking about? And on the other hand, if you go to UP, then not a single organization is banned in UP, but you see, you know, thousands of cases being filed every year. So what terrorism are we are fighting? I think the way the UAPA is invoked, it's basically to keep certain people whom you do not agree with, the government doesn't agree with, under detention, because the bail conditions are such stringent, and the way the, 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 the lower judiciary reacts, it's almost impossible to get uh, bail. You know, I mean, even after filing of the charge sheet, when you know that there is no way you could interfere with the prosecution and all the evidence have been collected and placed before the court for adjudication, you still do not get bail. And that's what happened to all other colleagues of Judah Bharadwaj. And she only got in on technical ground. So that's the crisis at the moment. Okay. Uh, Niranjan uh, L. Shetty, who is spokesperson uh, BJP Maharashtra, is also with us on the broadcast. Niranjan, uh, so my guests uh, who have spoken so far on the debate seem to agree at least on one point or seem to uh, have this view that in some way or the other, UAPA uh, is getting misused. Uh, I haven't been uh, hearing uh, both the learned people. I know they are, they are much more above me and they have been in this... Uh, faculty for many years and as you rightly uh, raised your aspirations about whether the law is misused and this has been happening since yesteryears. So it was very unfortunate to hear from the people, uh, such a learned people, that such kind of uh, law has been misused and especially from Mr. Hegde. Uh, having said that, I would only like to... Just, just interrupting uh, you there, down. just interrupting you there, Mr. Shetty. Do two wrongs make a right? Are you then trying to justify this? I mean, if I'm something wrong has it. been happening for many justify. years, so it is supposed to continue? Is that what you're trying to tell us, sir? Is that your argument? Not at all. Not at all. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, put my view. I was, I'm only trying to say that if at all uh, Ms. Sudha Bajwas today, as per as we are stating that she has got, granted a default bail, then in the past, the kind of accusation that it's been trying to be leveled upon the BJP or so-called people that this has been institutionalized, I am totally saying it's very falsely, very falsely propagated, number one. Number two, whatever the days that she has spent, it was not been politically affiliated or politically asked. It was the additional judges, either of Pune or other courts, which has asked to keep her in the police custody or detain uh, even after the expiry of certain CD. So are they trying to question the authority, authority of all those additional judges or the judges who has uh, asked Sudha Bargos to be taken into custody? Okay. Some, there must be some time of Asia Prima facie evidence into that. Without that, would any judge ask to be taken into custody? That but then is my, my mood question, question remains the same. Why hasn't the trial started so far? If you're so confident, if the agency is so confident about this it case, then the why agency. hasn't the trial started? The so Haas Chakma also wants I'm to come in on this point. You can I question to this to the agency. Mr. Shetty, the agency Mr. Shetty one second. You, you made your point. Let Mr. Chakma also respond. Yes. The amendments which made the UAPA draconian we are brought by P. Chidambaram. And the Congress government had misused the TADA so much that they had to withdraw it. And of course, the Prevention of Terrorism Act was brought in. That also had to go. And that's why the UAPA uh, has brought it. So the, all the governments, I'm saying, once they are in power, you know, they believe that they can do no wrong. So what has happened with TADA and OTA is actually happening with the UAPA. So we are not talking about one particular party. It has the trend of the executive, just that they have become more jealous now. Right. So, Mr. Sanjay Hegde, will you like to uh, respond? Then I'll go across to Susan Gonzalez as well on what Mr. Shetty said. No, Mr. Chakma has more or less spoken the correct uh, position in law. My point is not with any party. My mm. point is with the system and more importantly, with the belief on the part of the government, any government be that, that the liberty of the citizen is at the mercy of any set of policemen who are answerable to the politicians and that the courts will not interfere. The courts have tied themselves into knots. 
the Supreme Court's judgment in Watali, which is a three-judge judgment, is what has caused a great deal of grief in these UAPA cases. And as somebody put it, the classic definition of tyranny is when you make a harsh law and use it selectively against those whom you do not like. Very well said. Uh, in fact, now I also want to uh, welcome on the show a very special guest. We have Susan Gonzalez here for our viewers. She's the wife of Vernon Gonzalez, who is in jail right now. Same case for which Sudha Bhardwaj was in jail. In fact, Susan uh, turned lawyer only to fight these particular cases. Susan, thank you for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. What are your thoughts this evening? Uh, I, I'd like to... Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, so let me first clarify that I did not become a lawyer to fight these cases. I am a lawyer since 1986. I have I been a labor there. lawyer. Yes. I, and, and, yeah, and I'm Susan Abraham. And um, uh, 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 as a lawyer, I started my work as a labor lawyer in the 80s. And I have been fighting uh, not just uh, these cases, but I am on the Bombay High Court Legal Aid Panel. I do labor matters, women's rights matters, human rights matters. But I have been paying particular attention to this case because my husband, Vernon Gonzalez, is among those arrested. But I'd like to also tell you that from the time of the first arrest, that's in June, Eight, uh, June 6, 2018, I have been attending this matter in Pune. And in August, Vernon and uh, three others, four others got arrested. Now, the point I'd like to make is that uh, the question being asked to us is, why has bail been granted only to Sudha Bharadwaj? So I want to bring... Uh, uh, to the notice of everyone. And I hope the Bombay High Court will take so much notice of this as well. Because if I were to read from uh, the paragraphs pertaining to why bail is denied to these uh, remaining eight people, because in Pune, before the NIA took over, there were nine persons who were arrested under the Bhima Koregaon case. They were termed as the BK-9 in Pune. And after the NIA took over in January to 2020, uh, seven more were added. So it, the, the number has now become BK-16. So of the BK-9, all eight have filed default bail applications. I want to emphasize here, and I wish that the Bombay High Court will take so much notice of this, because para 147 of the judgment, which is a 120-page judgment, states um, uh, that, just give me a minute. Yes. Neither applicants 1 to 5, 1 to 5 is... Surendra Gadling, Sudhi Dhaule, Rona Wilson, Shoma Sen, Mahesh, uh, Mahesh Raut, and um, uh, so five of them. And it states that uh, they, they claim to have filed a default bail after the filing of the charge sheet. But the point is that all of them have filed uh, default bail applications prior to the filing of the two charge sheets. Okay. In the case of the first five, it was filed in November uh, 2018. In the case of the next four, including Sudha Bharadwaj, Vernon Gonzalez, Vern, uh, Varavara Rao, Arun Ferreira, it was filed in uh, Feb uh, uh, February uh, 2019. Right. Now, I would just like to read from the order of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, Bombay, uh, of the Pune court, mm -hmm. based, on which, based on which the, uh, the Bombay High Court has held that only Sudha Bardwaj has uh, filed 
it that order is dated 6/11/2019 hmm. and that is an order which says common order it's a common order below criminal bail applications for there are three bail applications and those three bail applications are of vernon gonzalez arun ferreira and varavara rao and sudha bardwaj and the order states all these are applications for bail filed under section 167 subsection 2 of the uh, 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 of the crpc uh, crpc accused were arrested on 288 so this is 288 when four of them were arrested right. on 2211 before expiry of 90 days Uh, 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 an so, extension was granted. Thereafter, charge sheet came to be filed, okay. and therefore the order of six eleven says all the applications are rejected. Hmm. So what I want to point out is that default bail applications were filed by all the eight accused. So okay. therefore, we will be moving the High Court for a rectification of this order we are extremely happy we did not take any steps till sudha bardwaj was released so okay. that there should be no delay there should be no delay and this was the stand taken by the 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 accused as well as the lawyers right uh, we said the order came on the first yes. we said we will wait till the 8 we will wait till sudha is released okay. then so, we will take our so now you are going to proceed as ahead as well sapril kothari also wanted to come in yes mr kothari um hina uh, what i wanted to say is and the reason why i emphasized upon the supreme court is because uh, just for the benefit of your viewers article 141 of the constitution says that the law declared by the supreme court is binding on all the courts in the country including the high court and all the lower courts obviously there is going to be a lot of time to sensitize the police and the investigating agencies to be zealous or to be aware or to be solicitous of the personal liberty of individuals that malice that institutional malice or that personal malice is always going to remain because they are human beings the reason why the lower courts will tend to you know sort of vacillate as far as this particular thing is concerned is because they'll have lawyers quoting both sides of the coin in the sense you know they'll have 10 judgments on one side and 10 judgments on the other take aryan khan's case you the lower court denied bail the high court granted it so unless and until there is a particular dictate from the supreme court not because every time you have to go to the supreme court i didn't mean that and when the application was made by sudha bharadwaj to the supreme court it was made on medical grounds not on the grounds of a perverse That's investigation it. making her languish in the jail so that was not the case i am making a specific point that if you make a specific point before the supreme court because the matter is seized by the supreme court at some point it was earlier and it can go back to that then the law will be declared in such a manner where you know you have say for example anticipatory bail conditions have been laid down by the supreme court by a five judge constitution bench this this particular matter as far as this bail non bail kind of a statutes are concerned you know these rigorous non bail statutes of uapa pmla and ndps are concerned there can be a constitution bench sitting and unless and until you do that and unless and until you declare the law you declare the law all of these things are going to be a mere academic exercise and you and i are going to continue to debate this for the next 2 3 years 4 years until that constitution bench sits and declares the law to the effect that investigations which are perverse or which come to be perverse need to be nullified or negated and the bail should be granted immediately why there has to be any even an application for the default bail in fact the supreme court in one of the cases and in fact the delhi high court had also said that at the end of 60 90 or 180 days as the case may be it is the duty of the superintendent or the warden to inform the uh, accused that look the 90 days 60 days or 80 days or 180 days are expiring and right. you have a right to get that default bail so unless and until you see that coming from the courts you are not going to see that day and uh, you know to sensitize that particular warden mm. who may be susceptible to a lot of other uh, emoluments or temptations i don't want to go into those details you are smart enough to understand what i mean so yes. that's the reason why you need the judiciary Hmm. to call that okay and in fact mr sanjay hegre had also mentioned in his opening remarks only that country needs to review the way the uapa operates in your opinion sir your closing comments what should be the right way forward so that we don't end up discussing the same issue again because there are still many who are waiting to come out for whom bail is a right but are not being given well 
ultimately unless you begin to hold investigating officers or investigating teams responsible for unjust incarceration you are going to have this repeated uapa will go and another kind uh, harsh law will come in we need to have a system where if there is unjust incarceration and uh, cases which do not finally stand up the investigating agencies which approved the filing of the charge sheets or which unnecessarily arrested the people in the first place they would they would they would need to be made answerable either in terms of uh, uh, monetary or i or other punishments because uh, when such provisions exist to take action against the officers the officer can then stand up to the politician and say look i i am not going to put my neck into that news mr chakma may uh, uh, being a former police uh, officer uh, has a different point of view i think you ought to listen to him speaking he was raising his hand <laughs> yes uh, <Exactly>. sir <laughs> what is it that you would like to say so no, i was just saying i am not a former police officer i am a human rights activist uh, what i am saying okay. what i'm saying is unless you define what is terrorism related to violence the moment you include freedom of opinion expression within the ambit of uh, you know definition of terrorism it doesn't matter what kind of jurisprudence you have ultimately police will be susceptible to political pressure and this kind of cases are used for political purposes so i think the key point is whether the offenses which are dealt with the ipc also needed to be included in the uapa that's a critical issue if the sedition is an offense under the ipc why do you need to include that in the uapa so what we need is revisit of the uapa not only the bail conditions irrespective of what are the bail conditions put by the supreme court even in normal cases you would always have the judges shift from one judgment to other judge we basically need to ensure the certain provisions of the uh, uapa do not comply or do not follow with the definition of terrorism itself that's where the problem is okay mr susan your last comments then i'll go across to mr shetty as well for the closing comments yes uh, i i just want to say that uh, this is a case the bima koregaon case is if you go to the origins this itself is a conspiracy against uh, uh, human rights activists throughout the country who had nothing to do with a program called elgar parishad which was held on the 31st of december 19, uh, 2017 there was violence on the first the 200th anniversary of the bhima koregaon <clears throat> battle and that violence was perpetrated by hindutva groups active in pune the, there are police reports to this effect instead of uh, taking action against uh, milind ekbotte sambhaji bede who led the attacks on the thousands of people who went to pay homage to the obelix at uh, bima koregaon and but and and committed violent acts against them today you have 16 people arraigned as accused for having perpetrated that violence does it even make sense so this kind of making up of a case hmm. a false case there's a fabricated case because we have brought evidence in the high court about how the electronic devices of some of the accused were compromised mm -hmm. there was malware and because of which uh, very conveniently they got these names and they have been arraigned as accused mm -hmm. all all the accused are ready to fight this trial but you have put a draconian act like you have behaved with which it it is such an appeal struggle there is no bail as a right whereas the perpetrators of the violence hmm. of 
January 1st, they are roaming around free. There's no, there's not even a, a case, a trial going on. Okay, Niranjan Shetty, quick response, then I'll have to wind up this debate. Yeah, I would only like to conclude by stating that in the opening remarks, you asked the panel whether in democracy, whether any uh, innocent is entitled to seek a bail or not. Of course, I stand with your uh, with your stand. I would like to say, of course, every innocent pe people is has to uh, get a bail and he, he has every right. Having said that, I would only like to question my few of the learned lawyers that whether Till date, Sudha Bhardwaj, whatever uh, she was languishing in the jail, was it due to the political in interference or whenever she was taken before it was, uh, she was uh, passed by certain session judges or the chief met metropolitan judges. These were the people who had seen some prima facie into that case and thereafter she was not allowed to go scot-free. And today okay. it is the Supreme Court. So both judgments... See, allow me to speak, sir. Both judgments were decided by the honorable judges, and it was not in any individual uh, person who has declared such, such kind of judgment. Hmm. But, you know, the point that still <laughs> remains, uh, the trial still hasn't started, and she was in jail for about three years. That was the reason why I asked that very specific question, just like everybody else. Was she also uh, not having this right of bail which was being opposed repeatedly thank you very much all of you for joining us here on urban debate heading into a short break we'll be back with more